So we finally got around to seeing Mudbound, and it was pretty damn good, except it would have been better seeing it in a... Cinema! Would have been much better if it was available to see in a cinema, because it's a good movie that would have been better if we saw it in a cinema. Thanks, Netflix! But of course we do want to thank Netflix for bringing this great movie to its platform where more people will be able to immediately access it. Uh, this film is based on the book by Hilary Jordan. It is directed by Dee Rees who also wrote the script for it. It has a fantastic cast including Jason Mitchell, Garrett Hedlund, Carrie Mulligan, Jason Clarke, Rob Morgan, Mary J. Blige, and our boy, our big boy from Better Call Saul, Jonathan oh, Banks. Oh yeah, we got Jonathan Banks in this. There you go. And this story revolves around the various people in two families in 1940s Mississippi. We basically have a kind of racist white family and this, this black family that's really working hard to try to make a life for themselves in a land that is very unforgiving to them. And this movie is very, very interesting in the way it explores the fact that uh, the, the land and the time is unforgiving to everyone and that everyone is struggling. I think that's got a really, really fantastic approach where no character is kind of valued more than the other. A lot of fuss has been made about the fact that the director of this movie is African American, she's a female, and that was going to kind of put a skew on it. But I think what's happened is she's ended up managing to balance all of these characters really well and really authentically. Yeah, this is the first film I've ever seen by Dee Rees, and obviously I think we actually heard a lot about her moving into the film before mm. seeing her, so we kind of knew how she approached the film uh, with her directing style, which was very theatre driven, very actor based. So I was very, very excited, and look, it delivered on many, many, many levels for me, especially with its use of characters and balancing multiple characters so goddamn well. Especially when we have characters that we hate and other characters that we love and you just, you have, you go through a journey of so many different emotions as an audience when you're watching this film. I think the most impressive part of this film and what really struck me, and it's kind of ironic considering it is on Netflix, which is basically a TV show type service, is the fact that this movie feels kind of so not only episodic, but in the way it handles so many different characters with so such an incredible flow between them. It kind of weaves and intersects and crosses over. It's just got this really, really strong TV drama vibe to it. And for me, at times, it almost bordered experimental, especially early on, the way it kind of flowed between characters and kind of like showed our characters in positions of thought or daily activities where we just saw the characters just sitting there doing their own thing and we have their voiceovers of the characters as well. And it was fantastic because you just got an extra insight into their thought process and their opinions of the world in which they were living in. It it very much reminded me of how Terence Malick worked with Thin Red Line, bouncing between character to character and hearing their voiceover and hearing their thoughts. I mean, Mudbound, to begin with, this film was blowing me away and I was like, I think this film could be one of my favourites ever. I think, however, though, it started to drift or it didn't, it kind of lost its flavour later on in the film. I think we both have very distinctly different kind of issues with the film and I think it's still a very very good movie and I think this kind of for me at least comes down to more of a personal thing because on a construction level every single choice in this movie is clearly made clearly defined and they all work. I was watching this movie really late at night I was absolutely exhausted I was feeling really restless and now this is part of the problem I have with watching a movie at home as opposed to watching it in a cinema where it is a locked in experience but uh, this is a gorgeously shot film. It is really, really fantastically photographed. The, the images are fantastic. The way it is lit is absolutely gorgeous. But what I found is some of the framing of this film is so static. It's just characters talking to each other in close-ups all the time. And I feel like it didn't serve us. So we're seeing all this great acting work. But the actual camera direction only popped in moments. There were so many times where they're in a fantastic location. And I was like, start using... I don't want to relate this like to 12 Years a Slave necessarily, but I'm going to. That movie has a fantastic composition that is harrowing, heartbreaking, and just incredibly intelligent the entire time. Whereas I think this movie definitely suffered from being like stuck in just close-up to close-up to close-up to close-up to wide to close... And it didn't really have... As much as it had a great editing flow, it didn't necessarily have a great kind of composition to it. So for me, while I don't think it necessarily hampers the film at all and won't change people's actual experience of it, I was really, really bothered by the fact the photography was so beautiful, but the actual camera direction could not back that up. Now, I don't think I completely agree, but I definitely do understand, and I think that's why in the second
second half of this film, I definitely started to feel that way because I was seeping into more so the fact that the camera wasn't moving and it wasn't doing more things that like I, I was seeing earlier on in the film where it just felt as though D. Reese had this kind of experimental, free-flowing, beautiful, life-driven direction that I just, I hadn't seen in such a long time. And I was absolutely loving it. But then later on in the film, everything started to catch up and we saw less of that and the film started to become more chronological and more strategic in where it was going. That brings me to my next point. The structure of this film is absolutely fantastic. Mm. However, I actually kind of still feel it would have benefited more from a different structure. More so in the way that like the film begins with the ending and then kind of comes full circle. And I actually think that it didn't necessarily need to. I think the way that it introduced its characters was beautiful enough as is and we got to know them that way. And so kind of having this end goal in sight kind of affected, I suppose, my emotions building up to the ending and the climax of the film because I kind of knew where it was going and I kind of wished that I hadn't because then I was starting to put the puzzles together and I was like, ah. And for me at least, I actually feel like it started to benefit from focusing in and I found that it definitely kind of, as it zoned in on where it was going, as I saw where that loop was going, how, where we were going to end up, as I started to add things together, I actually managed to appreciate what was done in terms of the construction even more. So I think this is a movie where I don't really see anyone watching this and not saying, hey, that was a good movie, but I think there's certain things about it that some people may or may not click with. As you can see, we both completely are in agreement that it is a great film with so many great elements, but the fact that they may not necessarily all click click uh, will kind of vary from person to person. I think so for sure and I think it's because early on I was just so blown away by some of the stuff it was doing and later on I wasn't. I kind of had this uh, juxtaposition of feelings where I was like I'm loving this and I'm not so much loving this so it was kind of it was a, it was a weird viewing. The thing that does remain consistently great though is the performances. They are very understated. There's not really any moments where characters kind of explode but I think really like emotionally it's a very very volatile film. It manages to put characters together that are going to clash no matter what because they, are cut, they all come from different contexts. The film does a really fantastic job of exploring that, who they are now, who they were before, where they want to go. And when you start putting that all together, it really, really works. Everyone here does great work. Yeah, everyone here is fantastic. But I mean, look, we have said for a long time how much we love Garrett Hedlund. And here, he finally gets a performance where he can just shine because hey, I loved him so goddamn He's much. Really, he really was good. absolutely exceptional. In every single scene, he stole it for me. He was just... I don't know, so incredibly broken and I felt that he just went there as a performer. He went the extra mile and probably because of the fact that he had, he was under D. Rees and by the sounds of it, D. Rees directing process here was absolutely fantastic for all actors involved. Rob Morgan was also absolutely exceptional and I kind of haven't heard anything, anything about, about him. We've heard about yet. everyone else except for him. He is basically the patriarch of the black family in this film and the way his kind of internal struggle with what he's been raised uh, as and what his kind of his family is forced to do. He doesn't want to be a farmer that works for anyone else. He wants his own kind of life and his own setup, his own land so desperately, but his lifestyle and, and everything around him just stops him from doing this at every single turn. And watching him just boil over and that frustration just grow is just incredible. There's certain scenes in this movie that he has that were just absolutely astounding. Jason Mitchell and Kerry Mulligan also do fantastic work. Kerry Mulligan has always, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a performance from her that was bad. She is just a truly exceptional actress that does not get enough attention. I am definitely seeing for certain people across the board, including Mary J. Blige, uh, will also like be looking at Oscar nominations. They're definitely, there's definitely talk of them getting awards. I think there's definitely a lot of attention deserving towards this film, particularly when we get to the SAG Awards and we have the uh, ensemble nominations. I definitely see this film being put up in there because the entire cast collectively just coheres fantastically. And overall, I think the film builds to a really affecting ending. And I think what we've said along the way is that it's a great movie, no matter what, I think people will get a lot out of it. It'll just kind of depend from person to person uh, what actually works for you and what doesn't. But I think overall the film is definitely uh, mostly there. And I think a lot of people are gonna get a lot of stuff out of this. We really, really enjoyed it. I'm giving this one a 7.8 out of 10. And I'm giving this one an 8.5 out of 10. It's a demanding, visceral film, and we just could not recommend it more. Another banger from Netflix. So that was our review of Mudbound. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate did it? Did you like this video? Of course Crave you did. more banter. If so, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel down there somewhere. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, all at Breaking Banter.